I've gotten some questions about uh, the player controls and using PowerPoint's hyperlinking, so I thought I'd do a couple of screencasts. So on this particular screencast, what we're going to do is look at a little about uh, using the hyperlinks and um, controlling your your learner and the player controls. So let's say on this particular slide, which is slide one, I've got uh, some hyperlinks in here. In this case, I've got a click here button. Uh, maybe I've got places on here where I want you to click on the people, and that'll direct you to different slides. So in that type of scenario, or say you have a, a, a number of choices for the learner and you want to branch them based on the choices, what you want to do is you're trying to get the learner uh, to click on an area of the screen rather than the player control bar, and then you want to uh, direct them to different slides. So in this case, let's say I click here, and this actually takes me to slide 5. Now let's think about the logic of what's going on. So you're looking at your standard, you know, articulate presenter player controls. You're in your slide, you click slide one, you're on slide one, you click here, it takes you to slide five. You hit the back button, and that's actually going to take you to slide four. So what you want to do is actually have the back button take you to slide one. The other thing is you might have something where you want the learner to click on the screen, you want them to interact with the content on the screen, and you don't want them clicking the forward button because if they're on slide one, they click the forward button, they might end up at slide two, and you don't want that to happen. So I'll show you a couple ways you can control that. So what we'll do is we'll go into Slide Properties Manager up here. So on the Slide Properties Manager, what you have is a few features that you can work that controls uh, how the slides and the learner interact. So the first one is, let's say we're on slide one, and what we want to do is we want slide one, and uh, there's a number of hyperlinks on there, and we want the learner to have to click on those hyperlinks. We want we don't want them to use the player controls to navigate away from that slide. So what you can do is really easy, just click the lock feature, and what the lock will do is it completely disables the player control. So they can't navigate with the back forward button, and they can't navigate with the uh, side menu panel. So they have to click on the hyperlinks that you might have uh, in your slide. Uh, another thing you want to consider is, okay, say they're on slide one, and they go to slide five. When they click the back button, they're going to go to slide four. So what we want to do is actually link them back uh, to slide one. So we just come over here to slide five. We click on the branching feature, and then we select the previous button and we want slot the previous button to go to slide one, we hit OK. And now you notice they're on slide one, it's locked, so they have to click a link. When they click a link, it comes to slide five. Um, and on slide five, if they do want to go backwards, what we do is uh, we've got it set so when they hit the back button, they actually come back to slide one. So that's how you can control the navigation for the learner. If you want to disable the player functionality, and uh, control how the learner gets around those slides. Uh, in the next screencast, I'll actually show you how to disable all the navigation and just use PowerPoint's hyperlinking.